preach. Uh, page 260, chapter, the person who is patient when people injure him. Ibn Umar said, the Prophet Sallallahu said, the believer who mixes with people and puts up with their abuse is better than the person who does not mix with the people and does not put up with their abuse. Authentic. So the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam is telling us that there are two types of people. Type one who mixes with others, interacts with them, answers and accepts their invitations, invite them to their or to his events, yet through the process, he is tolerant. Because when you mix with people, inevitably you have to get harm. This is a well-known fact. If you befriend someone, you will benefit, but you will get some harm. If you mix with a group of Muslims, you will see things that may not be appropriate. You may have to bring it to their attention. They may attack you accordingly. Because when people are advised, they are a little bit more or less defensive. They don't accept. You would not accept if I say, Akhi, why are you doing this? Immediately you become defensive. But if I speak about the same sin on someone else, although you're doing it, you say, Subhanallah, I don't know how people behave like this. Because it's not you. It's someone else. And this is why the best form of advice is the advice that comes indirectly. The Prophet, when he used to see something wrong, he used to come to the pulpit and say, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah. Why do so and so people behave in such a fashion? And he does not address that individual. This, this is the best way of doing it so that you can break the ice and make people accept your advice. So this is type one. Type two are those who do not want headache. So they say, listen, I, if I mix with people, they cause problems, we fight, they don't like me, they uh, 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 backbite me and I backbite them. Tell you what, I will stay home, I will not go out, I will not answer any invitation, and this way I will be safe. Now, this is your right. You can do this. No one is forcing you to come out. But what is more rewarding to Allah Azza wa Jal? If you stay back home and pray, or if you mix with people and advise them and teach them and tolerate their abuse, definitely the latter. So in this hadith, the Prophet is highlighting that you have to be active have to be tolerant, have to be patient, because life is not easy. So, is this is an encouragement for you to mix with others, to tolerate, to be patient. However, there are other hadiths that go against this. This is in the times of tribulation and fitan. The Prophet tells us that there will come a time when the best of you would be a man with few of his sheep at the top of a mountain, eating and drinking from these sheep and worshipping Allah, staying away from people. So how can we understand this? We can understand that it depends on what? The pros and cons. Someone says, Sheikh, I have a rage problem. If I open my mouth, 10 seconds later, I end up beating the man. Anyone who says anything, I cannot tolerate. I know people like this. I know practicing brothers, every other week he's coming with a black eye or what is this? Well, I met someone, I told him, this is haram. He said, it's not of your business. I spanked him and we had a fight. And 
we ended up in the police station. Oh, wallahi, I tell him, Akhi, I, don't, I will not tell you shave your beard because this is a sin. But what you're doing is more sinful. You're giving us a bad reputation. He said, what can I do? I cannot tolerate this. Some people, when they say evil, when they see evil, they forbid it, which is good. كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ This is excellent. But if it's going to cause a bigger problem, don't do it. Allah says, do not curse the idols if it would lead for the idol worshippers to curse Allah. Cursing the idols is good. They are false. They're nothing but stones. But if this would lead them to curse Allah, which is bad, then refrain. Don't do it. So measuring the consequences is an extremely important aspect in Islam. Therefore, this hadith is general. Individuals who fail to comply, we would say, stay away. If you open your mouth, you cause devastation, shut up. Sit back, relax, extend your feet, watch uh, uh, television or the news, don't go out. But generally speaking, no, you have to train yourself. Life is not paved with flowers and roses. There is hardship. If I come and tell my wife to do something Islamically, she says, look at yourself. Do this and that first. This happens. You come to a brother or a friend, Akhi, you're doing this sin. This is not permissible. Allah says so and so. So I'm just giving you advice in the cause of Allah. Jazakallah khair. Cut your nails first. Oh, sorry, I didn't know that my nails were long. But what does this have to do with that? Touche. You saw my mistakes, I saw your mistakes. What, what kind of Muslims are you? Once you get the advice, say, Zakallah khair, take it, accept it, implement it. Why must it be personal? If you see my mistakes, I see your mistakes. Okay, assume I did not see your mistakes or brought it to your attention. Then I will hush hush. Subhanallah then your intention was not for the sake of Allah when you corrected me. It was just to get even. And this shows you how bad Muslims can be when they do not do what they do for the sake of Allah. Azza wa Jal.